Hi, my name's Adam Hamlin. I'm the editor of WetPixel. I'd like to welcome you to WetPixel Live. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is iColite, to have uh, one of the largest ranges of underwater housings, and they produce strobes and lenses and various other accessories for underwater photography. Please head on over to iColite.com to check out what they're up to. Um, I'd like to welcome my fellow presenter, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to be here. Nice to see you. Um, here being home, of course. Um, but, well, um, I meant here on WebPixel Live. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Well, it's nice to be home too. But um, so yeah, I, 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 yeah, I could do the break from being at home. <laughs> not anywhere else most of the year. Yeah, and 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 often, obviously, the places that Alex and I both visit regularly um, have resident populations of sharks. Um, and uh, we thought today we might talk a little bit about some of the problems that sharks are facing at the moment, some recent studies that have come out about them. Um, and I was going to lead really with a, uh, uh, an article that I posted or cross posted onto WetPixel, um, which is talking about the shark population in Guinea-Bissau. Um, and traditionally, the employment in Guinea-Bissau was largely for the oil industry. Um, and what's happened, the oil industry, the oil price obviously having collapsed, um, has meant that a lot of the people that previously made their living out of from the oil industry are no longer able to and this has resulted in a significant increase in people going out and fishing for fishing in general and the thing that they're fishing for is primarily sharks and they're fishing for them as a source of protein so these are artisanal fishing we're not talking here about industrial level fishing you know these are individual relatively small boats going out catching sharks and what they're finding because of this pressure is they're now having to go further and further offshore in order to catch sharks for food um, and they're also finding that the sharks that they're catching are younger, more juvenile um, sharks. And this is this is kind of trying to highlight this issue that you know the global economic situation, the global, and obviously that's going to be affected by the pandemic. It is is the, the the shark conservation story is tied to things that are much bigger than just um, you know taking the odd shark for for um, for food. It, it's it's a it's a it becomes a much bigger problem. Um, and I think I think, I this think is we a, can. So go on, go on. Go on I was going to say I think we can fall into the trap though of thinking things like recreational fishing and artisanal fishing don't impact marine life. You know, stainless decals were wiped out long before there was any industrialization in the world. You know, human beings have been wiping species off the planet for a long time. We're just a lot better at it with industrial methods. But you know, large populations doing anything have a really big impact on the on the natural environment. And I think it's, you know, it's a mistake to, you know, to necessarily divide artisanal fishing and industrial fishing apart. Um, both are trying to feed mouths and both will catch what's needed to do that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, while industrial fishing can be very devastating very quickly, you can underestimate the impact very easily of saying, oh, artisanal fishing, that's all good. And recreational fishing, that's not doing any damage. And both can have a big impact on the ocean. Yeah, and I'm sure that artisanal fishing can also involve entering the market as well. You know, it's not simply um, catching food to put on your table. It's also catching food that you can sell for, to others. So, so it, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, there is there is a commercial aspect to it as well. Um, and you know, if 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 you're traditionally have made your living in one way and no longer can, then then this would be. And and really, what we're talking about here is is you know levels of poverty where people are forced into this situation where they have to then extract. A living and an income from the sea, and the sea is not really capable of coping with it. Um, I think as as divers and photographers, we frequently go to places that have relatively abundant populations of sharks. Um, obviously, places like the Bahamas that have done a fantastic job of protecting sharks for over a long period. Um, you know, they present a somewhat um, unrealistic expectation about shark populations. Um, you know, if you go into onto feeds on Facebook, on the WetPixel group on Facebook, for example, you know, there's lots of shark pictures. So, so that creates this idea that somehow there are a lot of sharks around. And I think, Alex, you, was, you, you've got, you were looking at a paper that suggested that that, that certainly wasn't the case. Mm, yeah, I think it's, though, it's, it's really valuable to visit those destinations, first of all. I think it's important mm. that all of us are aware of how the ocean should be, yeah. so that when we go to other places and we don't see hordes of sharks on the reefs, or, you know, in the ocean, we realize what's missing. Otherwise, you know, the, the paper that, that I was going to point out was one published in Nature just a few weeks ago. Nature's a big scientific journal saying that 
over the last 50 years, o oceanic shark populations and ray populations have all, you know, fallen by by over 70%, you know, three quarters of the sharks and rays are gone from our ocean compared to that. Go And the majority of underwater photographers I know have all taken up diving within those 50 years, most of them much less than 50 years. And as a result, none of us have seen the ocean as it was then. And obviously then it was already heavily impacted. It's not that, you know, industrial fishing just started within the last 50 years. We were already yeah. doing a lot before then. Yeah. But I think, you know, what, and where we can fall into the trap is, is get convinced by what we saw when we first saw things was the natural baseline. And yeah. actually the natural baseline was far richer than that. And that's why I think visiting places that do give high protection to their environment, you know, and particularly these larger predators like the Bahamas, like Palau, other, you know, countries that have done fantastic jobs as well. It yeah. gives us a chance to reset those expectations of what everywhere should be like so that we don't get conned into this shifting baseline feeling. Um, I think it was quite a scary um, paper, the Nature paper. I was going to read out a few of the facts. Um, they say that yeah, it's a 71% decline in shark and ray populations over the last 50 years, primarily caused by fishing them too much, and that the relative fishing pressure, so the amount of fishing we do, has increased 18-fold during that period. So, you know, although the population of the world hasn't increased 18-fold in that period, you know, we're just trying to exploit the oceans more and more and more and more, and, you know, where the, the the fishing vessels are, are better at catching and even though they, they catch less individually because they've caught so much already there's just more and more pressure on fishing in the ocean i think as, um, a, as, a, pers as a personal note i mean i think i think I, i've noticed i mean i i grew up in south africa um in in the 80s and, and learned to dive in the 80s and sharks were very much a feature of pretty much most coral reefs so we went to coral reefs you expected to see, see sharks they were a fairly normal um, part of the of, of a day's diving, you know, you'd see sharks around. And okay, South Africa is still pretty sharky, but but um, it, you know, it, it certainly wasn't a, it wasn't considered at all exceptional. Whereas now we tend to get very excited when we see sharks, and that change in attitudes in some ways reflects their diminishing numbers. I think, you know, mm -hmm. um, the fact that we, we we get terribly kind of excited when we see a shark that that is 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 a bad sign. We should be seeing them all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and data in this paper, you know, says something, you know, pretty similar to that, you know, in the in the, in the tropical Indian Ocean, um, the shark and ray abundance has continually declined since 1970 and has fallen, um, you know, in 50 years, it's 1970, you know, we were thinking 50 years ago, that must be, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. pre-war or something. And the reality is, you know, 1970, it's not that, that you know, not, not that long ago. You know, yeah. the world already knew Sergeant Pepper, you know, you know, before all this. And, um, you know, in there, the, the sharks have fallen by 85 percent mm. across the Indian Ocean. And that is a place that many of us visit to dive in um, and to see. And it's, you know, it's a part of the ocean that that many of us know well. Um, mm. I think it's um, I think that rather than being, you know, you know, these these I always like to use these figures for me and these sort of, you know, scientific data that comes out rather than put my head in my hands and go oh gosh you know aren't humans yeah. awful aren't we ruining this planet i think it's a great chance to be motivated particularly as one of the people that goes underwater to yeah. really try and do all we can to change public perceptions to these things to talk about these issues but yeah. also to make people care about the individual animals because the way that you will make members of the public and the, and the, the majority of people on, on the in, in the world want to make a change about these things is to make them know the animals like we are you know you don't meet any person who's dived with sharks who thinks more sharks should be caught from the ocean Absolutely. and obviously the majority of people in the earth on earth are not going to get a chance to dive with sharks but if we can take great photos of them they're going to get a chance to share some of our experience and i think that's where photography can be very valuable and Absolutely. sharing those pictures on on social media sharing them with stories about how you had you know, fantastic encounters, and these were intelligent, interesting um, creatures to spend time with, exciting. Um, I think that can have a really big impact. And that's what I always take away from this is, is a, a renewed motivation to get out there and get other people enthusiastic about these ocean creatures. Because I think if you do, you will get more supporters and more people saying, you know what, we shouldn't be um, exploiting the natural world to the levels we are. And these animals, you know, deserve to have their space on this planet too. I read a quote about sharks which said that sharks have basically had uh, been the victim of a 2000 year bad PR campaign. Um, and, and in many ways that that kind of by trying to we can help to 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 change that 
by using our imagery and by using our experience and sharing our experiences, both visually and, and in terms of talking about sharks to people. And, you know, getting this idea that sharks are relatively sentient, you know, there's, that they have, they have um, lots of characteristics that, that people would describe as being almost anthropomorphic or, you know, you can anthropomorphize size them i think that makes them much more um you know it breaks down this idea that mm. um that there's sort of some sort of mindless man-eating machine that swims around the oceans which is obviously not um, yeah well and i think that's what you know we are the people who see it firsthand you know it's not another community it's our community are the, the you know this very small percentage of the human population that get to meet these animals face to face and if yeah. we're not telling the rest of the people about it no one yeah. is you know it really is us it's you know the people watching this who need to make a difference one of the shark conservation groups that i i support with my images um for, for a long time is bite back in the uk and yeah. one of their campaigns is to address the media's use of language around sharks. Yeah. And it, no, it does speak exactly to this, is that, you know, allowing, you know, media outlets to constantly use, you know, this hyperbole language about, you know, man-eater killer type shark stuff. Yeah. I think, you know, that, um, you know, is, is exactly the same that we can do with our pictures, is telling people how we had amazing wildlife experiences seeing these animals and not hyping up you know, that this, you know, you know, this animal was this or that or the other, which, you know, on most shark encounters, they never are. I had a very interesting conversation a few years ago with um, a body that calls itself the shark attack file. Um, and they gather basically um, shark human interactions, in this case, negative interactions. Um, and I, but the point I made to them is that, is that sharks don't really attack people, they bite people. Um, and we don't talk about getting attacked by a bee. We don't talk about getting, um, you know, you, you you get bitten by a dog. You've, people do get attacked by dogs, but generally they get bitten by them. And, and, you know, that kind of the way we use language is very important. We, people don't generally get attacked by sharks. Sharks have no malice involved when they bite people. They bite people because they're trying to make mm -hmm. sense of their environment and trying to find out whether they may be useful for food and possibly other reasons. But the point being is they're not, the sharks don't come up to people and go, right, you know, I'm going to attack you. They, they, they yeah. bite you for, for reasons. And using the way we choose to use language is very important. And um, it was interesting that the, the people I spoke to recognized that there was an issue with the use of the word attack, but said that that's where they've done it since 1940 and they weren't willing to change. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, but I know, I know, I know. Bite back, you know, they they work hard on that campaign, and they write to you know to newspapers, and they highlight things when when that language, everything, you know, everything from you know attack to shark infested waters, or you know, yeah. where else are sharks supposed to live? <laughs> you know, That's right. Yeah, if they're not infesting it. They live there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I, I think um, I think we should. Um, as photographers take every, you know, every opportunity we have to try and highlight sharks. And I think, again, maybe this is a, a point that we can practically do to try and try and um, enhance um, shark, the message of shark conservation is to try and be somewhat selective about what images we share sometimes. Um, you know, I think sometimes sharing images that um, show sharks as being um, sentient, interesting characters, as opposed to being teeth and gills is probably a good thing. Um, most of the time, um, because that helps to kind of get this message across as well. So as photographers, you know, we can choose what imagery we share um, as well. Be careful about the language of our pictures in terms of what, you know, what, what's, what story is this picture telling and in the same way as, yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's sens sensible advice because sharks really do need all those friends. Yep, yeah, as these studies show. So um, thank you very much, Alex. Alex has some wonderful shark imagery. If you go onto his um, website at www.amuster.com, it's right in there. Yep. Yeah, um, but I, I, after this, I'm going to go and try and share some shark pictures on social media. Okay, they're um, even better. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and um, yeah, and um, obviously check him out there. Um, so, thank you, Alex. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, which was iColite. Thank you very much. Um, we can't produce this episode without your support. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, please feel free to add any comments and drop us a like if you enjoyed. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.